The seven separatist leaders arrested by the NIA for creating unrest in the Kashmir Valley were taken to court today, where the agency was given 10 days to question them. The NIA says hardline leader Saeed Ali Shah Gilani is next on their radar, which would be a significant step. Nazir Masoodi and Tanima Biswas have the details. A day after they arrested these seven Kashmiri separatist leaders, men consider the second rung of the Hurriyat. Sources tell NDTV that the NIA will now question hardliner Saeed Ali Shah Gilani. The arrested men were produced before a Delhi court today. Key among them, Altaf Fantosh, the son-in-law of Saeed Ali Shah Gilani, accused of spreading terror in the valley. Sources in the NIA said they have told the court they have incriminating evidence against these separatist leaders. Their probe has revealed that these leaders allegedly laundered money to create unrest in the valley. Hawala money was being used to burn down schools and assist stone pelters. A dossier of 60 stone pelters has been prepared by the NIA to map the location of the separatists in relation to the unrest in the valley. In the valley, a strike against the arrests. This is the first time a central agency has targeted separatists. Now the valley waits to see what impact these arrests will have. People know the truth and uh, those who have taken money for on the bl blood of others will have to answer not only the Almighty but to the court also. It should have impact but time will tell. The ruling PDP is completely silent on these arrests because it has gone against their promise of talks with Hurriyat Conference in the agenda of alliance with BJP. While separates are feeling the heat of NIA crackdown, local police have its fingers crossed whether it has any tangible impact on the ground situation in the valley. With Tonima Biswas in Delhi, in Srinagar, Nazir Masoodi for NDTV. Well, to talk about that, here in the studio with us is Lieutenant General Atta Hasnan, of course, former GOC of the 15th Corps. He has served extensively in Jammu and Kashmir for many, many years. Praveen Swami, Strategic Affairs Editor of the Indian Express, is with us tonight. And Gohar Gilani, analyst and journalist, joining us tonight from Srinagar. Uh, General Hasnan, to you first. How important is this? Because these are the immediate second rung of the Hurriyat leadership, close aides of people like the Mirwais and Saeed Ali Shah Gilani himself, his son-in-law in the net. How important is this in this crackdown? Nidhi, frankly saying, uh, I think this was something which was waiting to happen for a very long time. Uh, let me start by just, just mentioning for your viewers that no terrorist movement, no movement of this kind can go on for 28 years without a couple of things. One of them is weapons and wherewithal, human resources, ideology, and most importantly, financial conduits. Without finances, a movement like this cannot run. So obviously, it's been happening for a very, very long time, and we have been aware of this entirely. But we have never sort of gone in a, such a focused manner to get after the financial conduits. It's been happening right across from Pakistan. You've been getting it from the Pakistan High Commission itself coming in cash. You've seen uh, accounts opened up in Delhi with cash cards available in Kashmir. You found money being distributed on the streets, so the stone throwers being, th being paid money. So money has been the main game here. Now, finally, I think all these years, the hope was that the Hurriyat would finally deliver someday. And therefore, we were always Which is why the government of India was I also think the government them. of India. Which is what Mr. Dulat has pointed out. That's in right. There that, that, yeah. was a hope in this that mm. it could be an alternative kind of a leadership at some stage, some level. But that hope, has, I, I think, has been belied now completely. And now, finally, a central agency, after 28 years, has got after this particular issue, the issue of finances. And I think this is a very, very important juncture in this entire 28-year conflict. Uh, Praveen, what's your assessment of this? Uh, and, you know, in terms of the impact it could really have on the ground, uh, j just give us your assessment and the fact that there is clearly a shift now in the way the government is looking at dealing with separatists, as General Hasnain pointed out. And I was referring to Mr. Dullat, the former RNAW chief, spoke where he talked about how uh, the separatists were paid by both sides for so many years in the in, in the hope that, you know, perhaps things would turn at some point. You see clearly now, Praveen, a shift in that position. Well, first up, I think it's important to remember that it isn't really the first time in 28 years that uh, this is happening. In 2011, we had prosecutions, uh, income tax prosecutions targeting people in the Hurriyat, one or two people in this list. Uh, were similarly targeted then. In fact, you can find a long string of cases 
uh, going back to the time of the Jain Hawala diaries with you know the same names again and again in circulation. And what's happened is that each time these proceedings have begun, uh, the government's chosen to, if you like, do a deal with these people and say that you know if you engage in some political process, if you play the play the game, uh, these cases will be allowed to disappear and go away. And uh, I at least can say that I personally hope that that does not happen because one of the things that uh, has sadly been allowed to go wrong in Kashmir all these 28 years uh, is that the rule of law has been allowed to collapse because of expediency and the rule of uh, law not only on the Hurriyat end of the fence but on uh, the government end of the fence also. Uh, and if things are going to be set right, it's important that uh, the rule of law uh, triumphs and if that is what happens this time around then it's certainly going to be a very welcome step. Um, if on the other hand this turns into another of those protracted cases where there's some skullduggery and deal making uh, and you know backroom handshake at the end of it, uh, then it's going to be yet another sad episode uh, uh, in very many sad episodes. Uh, I'm not an astrologer, I don't know what's going to happen, uh, but yes, Hopefully, uh, this time around, there's going to be some seriousness about this. Uh, you know as well as I do, Nidhi, that uh, uh, in the Huriyat and in people on the so-called pro-India end of the fence, you've had far too many people who started out at the beginning of this insurgency having nothing and uh, today live um, in what can only be described as uh, live an obscenely good life yeah, uh, and have built that good life and on I the bodies you of dead are people. That point that this, um, this and is probably uh, different. that this insurgency has generated entrepreneurialism. Yeah, no, I, th I think the point that you're both making, which is important, is that I, perhaps... I hope it's different. Yeah. I don't know. Well, uh, Gohar Gilani, how is this being viewed in the Kashmir Valley? Uh, uh, the fact that this crackdown has taken place. I know that people are often wary there to make public statements against Mr. Gilani and others. Uh, but uh, having said that, I hope you can stick your neck out and uh, be honest here about what the reaction is. Uh, first of all, Nidhi, uh, there is always a difference uh, between the perception that exists in New Delhi and the perception that exists in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, especially the Kashmir Valley. Uh, you know, as Mr. Atta Hasnan or, you know, Mr. Praveen, Praveen Swami, what, what they said, that's a perspective which people see as a Delhi perspective. Uh, here on the ground, it is, there are multiple dimensions that people are looking at uh, from different prisms. One, one of them being that this is, these arrests have come and it is seen as an arm twisting and uh, wiping away the middle ground uh, because, you know, in the agenda of alliance, it was written <coughs> that uh, PDP and BJP government will talk to the Hurriyat and uh, they have accepted them as stakeholders and now they, are, they have handcuffed them, their leaders and uh, arrested them. So that is one perception. Second is uh, there are people who are saying that no movement can run without money and there is no problem. People are not ang angry that Hurriyat people have money uh, because no movement can sustain, sustain without money for so long. But uh, there, there is a section of people, especially on social media, uh, the youth who are asking questions of the Hurriyat. Some tough questions are also being asked if that money has been used for any criminal act, for example, burning down schools. So that is, there is some anger on the social media. So third is that it will be uh, intellectual dishonesty to, to deny that uh, an indigenous political sentiment for right to self-determination uh, exists in Kashmir because it's, it's uh, you know, the Hurriyat came into being in 1993. So Kashmir has seen uh, the biggest pro-freedom rallies in which more than half a million people have participated in the early 90s. That is 1991, 92, when civilian massacres took place from Gaukadal to Beach Bihara to Sopor. And, and this is, there is a political sentiment on the ground and Hurriyat represents that sentiment. There, there is a feeling on the ground that this is being, the, the Modi government especially has gone after the Hurriyat conference to wipe away the middle ground. And there is also some, uh, you know, some people are saying uh, with what is happening with China, China and India are, uh, are you know, kind of eyeball to eyeball confrontation at, okay, at the Doklam. So this you, is to deflect that. I, I don't yeah. deny what you say, which is that there is, there is that sentiment of separatism in the valley that's very obvious and that's a problem uh, that is something that needs to be addressed politically uh, but uh, you know uh, on, on this issue of uh, what you said that you know angry youth Kashmiri youth on social media are asking this question whether any money that the Hurriyat had was ever used to do a criminal act such as burning down of schools uh, I must ask you whether you know you also feel that the Hurriyat is innocent of, of these criminal acts I mean 
uh, you know, the, the NIA is claiming that, you know, they are directly responsible for creating unrest, for instigating people to throw stones, other terror activities. Those are very serious uh, allegations to make. I, uh, I mean, would you say that they would lose the people's sympathy uh, or, or any, any moral uh, leg legitimacy if, if this is found to be correct? Uh, see, Nidhi, I was on your program last time when the DSP uh, lynching had taken place. I told you at that time also that Kashmir society is very vibrant. You know, we have more than 60% of uh, the population is right now uh, comprises of youth. So there are, there are many, it's not one narrative. People, people are asking questions. There is, there is a section of youth who are asking questions that, you know, they, they hold the movement so sacred to them and the cause for self-determination is so sacred to them that if they find that people have actually been, you know, involved in some kind of a criminal act, they will get angry. And there is some kind of anger that the, uh, the part of that anger is expressed on social media.